friends, I'm here on a very kind request made by the Cochin Chamber of Commerce to speak to you and I'm grateful for that opportunity. Today, let me tell you a little bit about disputes. This is a term which has been present since the pre-human era. Different species have their own modes of settling it. The humans, in fact, have several modes. Some we know, some we do not. These times, which is the COVID-19 times, have seemed to have spared no one. We all are affected in our different ways. So am I. But is it, and, in, and it's natural that disputes will arise. What is the way out? Going to court, maybe? Or can we look out for something more ancient? Something our forefathers has, had used as a tool to reach out to warring parties. That is, to sit together as a community and sort it out. Maybe this time with a modern twist? I'm Ashish Bhakta, partner in NB Legal, and I'm here to tell you what conciliation means and how it works. Conciliation is a manner of settling disputes without litigation. It sounds interesting, doesn't it? Not? This finds its way in the third part of the Arbitration and Conciliation Act 1996. I will sum up a few provisions here for you uh, with the hope that it would help. The role of a conciliator is to assist the parties to reach an amicable settlement of whatever dispute there is. This alternate dispute resolution applies to disputes arising out of legal relationships, whether contractual or not. Yeah? The parties then appoint a conciliator by mutual consent, the warring parties of course, which could be any number. You could have five, you could have three, you could have two, you could have one, whatever number you want. Yeah? Uh, it's, it's not the odd even number uh, thing which most people have in their mind. Apart from that, there are certain disputes which cannot be referred to conciliation which are the disputes which under the Arbitration Act cannot be referred to arbitration. Say for example, your rent act or matrimonial disputes. These disputes cannot be referred to conciliation under this particular section or, or this particular act of or the part of the Conciliation Act. What does a conciliator need to do? A conciliator has to be independent, he has to be impartial, he has to be guided by the principles of ob objectivity, fairness and justice. He, the information which he gets should be confidential and should not be disclosed to either party, either this way or that way. He, he need not follow the rigid, pro, uh, the rigid procedures of the Civil Procedure Code or, or the uh, Evidence Act, etc. But he has to adhere to the principles of natural justice. Though, the, uh, though there have been cases where, where the conciliator has been accused of not following natural justice many a times. The conciliator may invite the parties to meet him or to communicate through uh, with him orally or in writing or, or together or separately. It doesn't matter. The meeting could be held where the conciliator decides. Nowadays, you could have it online as well. Conciliators cannot act as an arbitrator or a representative of a council of a party in any contentious proceeding and cannot also be a witness to the conciliation proceedings. To sum it up, in case you are in the midst of a dispute which you want to settle, conciliation is an alternate means of dispute resolution which is cost effective and quick. More so because the conciliation agreement which is executed between the parties once the, uh, once the conciliator and the parties come to a, uh, to a settlement has the effect of a decree of a court. So you, there, is, there is no way which a party could go back on his word without being liable under law. I hope this has been useful to you. Uh, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to